everything getting measured and prodded and poked over there at the Combine in Indy. It's Carpenter and Rothman. Bose has been at the podium. Cardale Jones. They're measuring hands, trying to figure out who's going to be the best NFL player. We bring in our buddy from ProFootballTalk.com. He is Zach Jackson. Zach, welcome to the program. Uh, you know what they say about big hands, right? Big lies. So we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they say. Yeah, I, I get it. Let's talk about that. Is that something where – here's the deal. When people say – when I hear people say, well, you ask them all these weird questions and you have to make that somehow apply to NFL, and everybody makes it this be-all, end-all. I kind of take it in the middle, that when you ask someone a psychological question, they're just using it for a small part of that person's character and makeup, desire, dedication, discipline. It's really not designed to say everything. So I think sometimes we take these things that they say at the Combine and we go overboard in our reaction. Uh, it, to me, it makes sense. Measure guy's hands. He's got to throw an NFL ball. They, ha- they have to have some analytics that tell you that, that most guys that have hands of a certain size can throw a football better. Yeah. Um, you know, on one hand, I think Bobby could speak to this better. I, I mean, I think now these guys are so coached up that when you hear these stories of these weird questions, I think it's guys just trying to get them out of their comfort zone, trying to get them to be real a little bit. And then on the hand size thing, I mean, there's two ways to look at it. One, that it does matter. Um, two, that, you know, you can sit on Twitter and make fun of it because the combine is kind of a exhibition in excess. But, you know, when Hugh Jackson uh, says that it matters for a quarterback who's going to play games in Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh in December and potentially January, then I tend to think it does matter. Uh, does that make a guy great? No, is that the determining factor in whether I'd take Connor Cook or Jared Goff or any of these guys? No, but I think it probably does matter. Uh, it just comes across to – to the average fan um, who's not in the combine is a little bit strange, but when he says it matters, I think it matters. You know, Zach, I guess, you know, the quarterbacks get in there and they're the ones that really get hit probably the hardest because so much of the, you know, their game, it's, it's the intangibles. It's the leadership piece. You know, Connor Cook had been hammered a little bit for that. You know, looking at all the different quarterbacks that are sitting here at the top of the heap, is there any one of the one or two of the guys that have helped themselves the most or you know, hurt themselves with how they've conducted you know, themselves in these interviews during the week? Well, you know, I would say that the guy that's helped himself is Carson Wentz by going to the Senior Bowl and competing. You know, for a kid from North Dakota State, that seems like a no-brainer. Um, and, and I guess we'll probably never know if, if Connor Cook just didn't want to go or if his shoulder really needed to heal more. But you know, through this stage of the process, Bob, there's only so much you can do. I mean, yes, these guys are interviewing, and, you know, I, I believe they all interview well, and, and like I said, they're coached up to do so. Um, they're used to being in leadership positions. They've been quarterbacks their whole lives or certainly, you know, uh, leading high-level college programs. So I just think it's it's actual things you do to say, hey, I'm a competitor, I'm a leader. And you hit it absolutely right. It's so much different for the quarterbacks because you are signing a CEO in one regard and in other regards and probably more, you know, the guy who's going to be the face of your franchise. So you can take a chance on a corner or a guard or a defensive tackle that's got some issues. But as the Browns learned with with, um, this kid that they're about to release in two weeks, um, you make a kid the face of your franchise, you better trust that he's going to represent you well uh, 24-7. Zach Jackson, ProFootballTalk.com, join us here on Carpenter and Rothman. You know, there are two schools of thought. One is that these quarterbacks don't leap off the page as franchise guys, so why spend your number two pick and take one? And the other school is you're a desperate team. That's a clear-cut need. You get your choice of whatever quarterback you want. You're going to be the team that gets to take the first quarterback, most likely. Why not take one? Do you feel like the Browns are in that mode? Hugh Jackson has to have a guy that he feels he can develop and not wait. Yeah, um, I don't know what Hugh feels. I don't know what he said. I feel very, very – I was almost said fairly confident, but that wouldn't do enough, that he you know, won them over by presenting a plan for, for getting a quarterback and talking about the importance of a quarterback. And you're right uh, – you know, we're all guessing on where Goff and Wentz and all these guys fall in relation to these talents in the draft. And it's a huge draft for defensive linemen and other guys like that. But, you know, Joe Thomas might go to Canton 
never having played in a playoff game. J.J. Watt could be the best defensive player in 15 years and might never sniff the Super Bowl. So that is my short answer to the question of, yes, you absolutely take a quarterback if you love one. Um, The longer answer is, you know, I I know the Browns will have a better offense, and, you know, (laughs) that's a low bar on that one. And I know that they will address that position and try to get him help. Um, But, you know, I think I'm not ruling out one of these other guys, Kaepernick, uh, RG3, someone else that becomes available. I just think it's it's pretty early. I mean, Hugh's been on the job five or six weeks, and they haven't made uh, you know th- this with very few exceptions. Is th- this week is the first time they've been in front of any of these quarterbacks. And, and look, they can have all the analytics and all the smart guys they want that have never done this before. As scary as that should be, if you're a Browns fan, um, he's the guy that's going to make the call on, on who they go with. Zach, is there too much emphasis put on the combine? I mean, Bill Belichick talked about how these guys are so coached through these drills, they're so coached through the interviews that you're not really, you don't really find out the same things that you used to maybe 15, 20, 30 years ago. You know, is it is it losing any importance to you? Um, you know, you know, Bob, I think it's probably 50-50. Um, you know, Anthony mentioned something before as being in the middle, and we when we're doing this, talking and yelling about it, we forget – but sometimes it is. I mean, look, if you're um, Taylor Decker and Nick Vanette and these guys and, and you've played at a high level and you've been scouted and gone to the Senior Bowl and done all these things, um, you know, played in the national championship game, it's probably not overrated. Um, if you've got questions to answer, whether it's about a failed drug test or an off-field incident or why you transferred or why you changed positions, it's probably valuable. If you didn't play at Ohio State, if you're a Matt guy or a North Dakota State guy or somewhere else, it's probably valuable. So, yeah, uh, I totally agree with you that it's it's become as it's become a more commercial and TV event, um, guys have become more coached up, and the focus is probably on, on, on different things from the outside looking in. But teams would not send – all 20 of their coaches and all 20 of their scouts and dig in if, if there wasn't still worth to this, it, it would just go away. So um, it's valuable. And although I don't think it's a ton of guys that are going to make or lose a bunch of money, um, you know, starting off a few days from now, going till next Monday or Tuesday, I certainly think there are, are guys who are going to benefit and, and, you know, the ones that don't fill a drug test or don't interview well uh, could potentially lose from this. Zach, give us uh, any type of feel on guys that are, even in Buckeye country, guys that are moving up because of the combine or guys that you feel will make a big name for themselves in Indy and solidify themselves as first-rounders outside of, obviously, yeah, Bosa I mean, and Zeke. Right. You know, it's hard to say from the combine. I mean, only the offensive linemen and the kickers have actually worked out on the field thus far. Um, you know, the, the last group, the, the defensive backs, I don't even think they fly in until later today. But, um, you know, I, I think – from what I know, people around the NFL, that Darren Lee is skyrocketing up and is going to be a top 15 pick in this draft. Uh, I think some people give Eli Apple a really high grade and some people give him more of a second-round grade. So I think this is a big opportunity for him to sway some of those who are lower. Um, you know, and I think people are curious about what Zeke's going to run in the 40. Mm-hmm. But, man, he's just a football player and, and a really good one. And so if Melvin Gordon can go 15 in the draft, I'm not saying Zeke will, but he certainly can. Is Zeke the number one running back in your mind? And no doubt about it. I mean, Derrick Henry is a, is a marvel. He, what do he weigh, 245 or 247? And he might run actually faster in the 40 than Zeke. But uh, yeah, to me, just what the way Zeke's game translates to the NFL, I don't think he's as good as Todd Gurley, but I think Todd Gurley, is going to be the best back in the league here these next couple of years, and I think he's got a chance to be right behind him. I mean, everything he does from catching the ball to block into the prototype size, getting those extra yards, I mean, I just think he's got a chance to, to have a really good NFL career. Should be a lot of fun to watch, Zach, buddy. Thanks for taking the time to visit with us. Always appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks. That is Zach Jackson, ProFootballTalk.com. Your number one source for sports, 97.1. The Fan. Fan.